This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. Hey there everybody and welcome back to another video about Blender, but it's not a Blender tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make a do not delete the default cube sticker, which I know is out of the norm of the kind of stuff I make, but I've been playing around with printing and cutting stickers, so I want to show you how we would design something, print it, and cut it. And at the end of this video, if you don't want to make it yourself, uh, I'll tell you how I can send you some of these. So. Uh, this is pretty simple because we don't need to do any Photoshop or anything like this. Literally, in a Blender, I'm going to hit X for delete, and I'm going to take a screenshot of exactly that. So, we're going to take a screenshot of Blender. Uh, to do this, here is what we are going to do. Uh, since we are using Windows, we are going to use Snipping Tool. If you're using Mac, you're going to use your respective tool. And I want to take a screen capture using Snipping Tool uh, with like a three second delay. So click New, get into position, that looks better. And there we go. And it turns out that a snipping tool by default doesn't keep the mouse cursor, so that's not going to be in there. So I'm just going to take a bit of a selection here. And now you can see that we have the image in snipping tool. So all I need to do is save it, and then we're going to process it a little. Now, the first thing we need to do, of course, is I need to kind of remove the background here, and then we're going to need to uh, up-res it. So one thing at a time. Uh, basically, just find the image, which is right here, and then we're just going to cut out the background. And because this is a rectangle, we can select it pretty simply. So rectangle select, select this here, and then just add a bit of rounded corner so that it's matching the shape here. And then secondly, I'm going to use the lasso tool. I believe if you hit, I always forget what it is. Is it shift? Let's, I think it is shift. If we hold down shift, I think it should let us make a additional selection. Control i to invert the selection and then delete to delete and uh, you can see uh, we've done it we've isolated it uh, a bit of a tip is i'm just going to before i uh, invert it i'm just going to shrink it by uh, one or two pixels so that uh, you don't see the boundary okay so again invert delete there we go i'm going to add a layer and then using the eye drop tool i'm going to get the color of this cube and then just using the paintbrush i bet we can just paint over this so you could have the 3D cursor in there if you want it to look like that. Uh, I do not, so I'm just gonna get rid of that detail. And then a bit of a final adjustment. You can see there's a bit of the Y axis poking out here. So I'm gonna take this, merge it down. So now this is a single layer. And then using the clone stamp tool, I can just clone stamp that out. Is it perfect? No, but it's in that good enough territory. So uh, this is the image I want, but you're gonna notice it's not very high resolution. Uh, so we also need to do something about that. To upscale our image, I actually have a website that I've found very useful. I saw it in a different YouTube tutorial. It's basically replicate.com. I'll put this URL in the description. Uh, basically what's going on here is it's a demo of a GitHub repo that what it does is it takes an image, as you can see this cat, and then it outputs a higher resolution version uh, where you can say scale it up by two or four or whatever. So it's actually very useful. Uh, so I'm going to drop in a file here, specifically our snip image. Uh, so you can see we have this PNG here. It does work on uh, transparent images. And I want to scale it up by, let's say, three times. Okay, so it made a high resolution version of the image, which, you know, is a bit crispier and it's sharp and all of this, except uh, you can see there's smudges and stuff like that. And that is because this is not used to images that are so simple and only have a few colors. So we're going to have to take this and correct it again. Uh, with this, we can do uh, fixing using uh, the clone stamp tool. So I'm just going to bring up the size of this, control click to sample, and then just erase or paint over it. And that is actually pretty good. Um, I think the last two things is I can improve this uh, orange border a bit for sure. Um, and then also, uh, this is looking pretty funky. So uh, I think this is another thing we can do with clone stamp. So I'm just going to bring down the size and then start sampling over this. And to get a crispier like orange edge, here's a little trick. I'm going to use the lasso tool on a new layer and we're basically going to repaint it so i'm just going to basically highlight the center of this line and we're going to turn the selection into a line with some thickness so i'm just selecting here here and here and then go to select uh, go to boundary if i can even find here or no it's called border and increase it by a couple pixels uh, basically the idea here is we're going to eye drop the orange and then we can fill with the bucket tool um, our orange color 
Uh, so you can see that's much cleaner. Here is the before and the after. Take everything and merge it down into a single layer. And as you know, a sticker usually has like a white border. It doesn't cut exactly to the image, although you could do that. Uh, so we need to add our white border here before sending this to uh, printing and cutting. I'm gonna make yet another layer, put that underneath. And just a bit of a trick, you can hold down Alt or Option depending on your OS and uh, click this layer uh, to get a selection of the boundary of this. Uh, why is this useful? Uh, because we can literally take this and grow the selection by let's say 20 pixels or so. And basically the bigger that you make this, uh, the bigger the boundary and the easier it is to cut. So maybe 35 pixels gives us a nice boundary, and then you wanna fill it uh, with pure white, which is the color of the paper. Uh, just a bit of an extra tip, again, uh, we can make this pop a little by adding a drop shadow to our image. And I like to decrease the blur radius and increase the opacity so it's a sharper shadow, and just bring that in closer. So this is the before and the after. It just adds a bit of something. Uh, scale it up so it's taking up most of the image space. And then, since it's at a high resolution, we're happy with this, uh, we can just export it. And before we get into the printing and cutting of our stickers, which I think is the fun part of the video, I want to talk about the sponsor of this video and basically the whole channel, uh, which of course is Squarespace. For those of you who don't know, Squarespace is the easiest way to make a website without any of the hassle, no HTML coding nonsense. It's just templates that you move and drag around blocks. And my website, www.cgmatter.com, is made with Squarespace. So here are three features you might be interested in. First thing is you get access to analytics so you know who is going to your website and demographic type information. Second of all, we have a section in Squarespace dedicated to keeping all your media and files and anything that has ever been an asset in your website so I can actually go back and look at stuff I uploaded back in 2019. And then the third feature, kind of the most obvious one, is the way we design websites is just dragging around blocks which I think is much more intuitive than anything else. So head over to squarespace.com, try making yourself a website, and when you're ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description, it's down there, uh, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's cut some stuff. So here's a piece of software called Cricut Design Space. Basically the cutter that I'm using is called a Cricut or a Cry Cut. I don't really know what it is. It has its own proprietary, proprietary uh, software. Uh, that you basically lay out where you want your stickers to be printed and then the software knows or tells the machine uh, where to cut it. So uh, just click upload and then you can upload an image. Uh, make sure this is set to complex since it has a complex boundary and a bunch of colors. Click continue, apply and continue. And then the thing you wanna see here is that your image is on the right, but also on the left, it has our alpha channel, including the white border, because this is basically what is going to be cut. So you wanna make sure this is correct. We are gonna select this one. You are going to click upload. And now with our image selected, we can add it to canvas and you can see it's right there. Uh, now, the thing about a canvas design space is it works in real units. I mean, I guess Photoshop does as well, but you can see here it's going from zero to seven. Uh, so this would be a seven inch sticker, which is crazy. Uh, so I'm gonna take this and scale it down and we can control C and control V. It works pretty much like most software. Uh, so I don't think I can do any more horizontally, but I think I can definitely get one more vertical uh, going on here. Okay, uh, so there we have a two by four. I'm gonna take all of this and flatten it down to a single image. And uh, if you don't get any errors, this is fine. Uh, but what you might have is if this image is too big, uh, you're going to see this red uh, thing. Uh, you just click it. It's basically saying it's too big for a piece of paper, assuming you're using eight and a half by 11. Uh, we are just going to auto resize the image, which is going to make it as big as it can be uh, to fit our page. And when you're ready, uh, we are going to click make it. And make it is something that involves two steps. It involves printing and cutting. You want to make sure that your material is correct for me it's eight and a half by 11. I'm going to click continue and then I'm going to send this to the printer. And you can also see that my uh, Cricut Air is connecting over Bluetooth. So I'm gonna send this to printer, making sure you use the right printer. And then these are very important settings. First of all, uh, we don't need bleed, which is gonna add a bit of a uh, buffer, some extra pixels around, uh, but we've already made it white in the boundary, so that's fine. Disable add bleed, and then make sure your add or use system dialog is on. Uh, the reason for this is it's going to give you your printer settings uh, where you can optimize this to be the best as possible. So using my printer, 
I want to go to the preferences. Uh, in my case, photo printing is available to me, which is going to be this kind of high contrast detail kind of printing. Uh, so make sure this is set to photo print. I'm in fact using glossy paper and our size is going to be eight and a half by 11. And then uh, we are ready to print. So I hope this was an informative video about how to make Blender stickers, but really works for any stickers. Uh, if you want to get the delete the default cube sticker uh, from me, uh, you can just email me here and I can uh, send one to you for like three bucks or something like that. I'm not sure how much it's going to cost, but uh, I can mail it to you uh, via the US. So either way, thanks for watching. Get a sticker if you want it. And that's it.